You've probably heard of the benefits of growing cover crops for your soil health, but how do you grow those cover crops while still applying regenerative agricultural principles on a small scale of like one to five acres? I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms, and when I came back to the farm several years ago, I wanted to apply some of the principles of cover cropping. The thing that I ran into, though, is that because cover cropping is associated with regenerative agriculture, it, people talk about planting it with no-till drills. The problem is that no-till drills tend to be expensive, specialized equipment that's really hard for smaller scale producers to either purchase or to rent or borrow. On three different occasions, we've rented no-till drills and we ran into problems each time. First, there is a specialized learning curve when using no-till drills. And because we used three different no-till drills from the same producers, the thing that we ran into is it's a learning curve every time to learn how to use that specific no-till drill. The other problem that I ran into though is that those no-till drills were not kept in the best of shape, so we had problems every single time we used them. Over the last few years, I've slowly worked out a way to try to figure out how to grow cover crops on a smaller scale while improving the quality of the forage for my livestock and especially improving soil health. So the first time that I planted cover crops, I actually planted them with a four foot tiller on a 25 horsepower tractor on half an acre right here behind me. I tilled up the ground with a tiller, then I broadcast the seed with a hand spreader, and then I just covered the seed up with a tractor on high speed with the tiller and just lightly covered the seed up and it performed really, really well. I got a lot of great livestock forage for the cattle and most importantly, even though I did not think that I'd have a whole lot of soil benefit because I tilled the land on the top five or six inches, what I realized is, is that the next year, that half acre of ground held a lot more moisture in a drought than the rest of the land that I planted later. Each year I increased the little bit of cover crops that I planted and finally last year I planted about four and a half acres of cover crops in this field and I had a friend with a tractor with a seven foot tiller that helped me get those planted in the same way that I had before and it worked out surprisingly well. However, using a PTO powered tiller, whether it's gear driven, belt driven, or whatever else, is a lot of warmth and heat that builds up when you're tilling that much ground. Most tillers are designed to grow on a small garden scale, not to till on larger tracts of land. So we were limited to about four or five acres of actually planting cover crops on. This year, however, we were able to scale up in large part because we purchased an eight foot disc that I can pull behind my 44 horsepower tractor. Now, let me say this, now we're disking the ground to about one to three inches deep we're breaking up the side and the grasses that are there then we run over it again another day or two later and then we may run over it a third time depending on how poor that soil is then i broadcast the seed and then those larger seeds are run over with the disc again and if i have smaller seeds in the mix i broadcast them just on top of the soil now right here behind me, I did try uh, covering the seed up with a drag harrow. We'll see how that goes. I'm not real sure how effective that will be, um, but we'll see how that works. Now it takes about two hours per acre to actually be able to plant this stuff. So it is a little labor intensive. And most importantly, that 44 horsepower tractor with an eight foot disc will bounce you all over the place if you're not careful. It does help if you have some free labor that you can exploit to help you disc and harrow the ground. Uh, it saves you a little bit of back work as well. Several people who have watched our videos have contacted me and said that if we continue to plant our cover crops with tillage or disking, then we will not get the benefits of those cover crops. Some of them have been rude and some of them are really genuinely trying to help. The thing that I think most people don't understand though is that they apply that principle of soil health that says minimal soil disturbance and they say that minimal soil disturbance means no tillage whatsoever. However, there is always going to be some kind of soil disturbance, whether it's with livestock or even no-till drills that will cut a slit into the soil, drop a seed in there, and then try to cover it up. Disking does disturb the soil surface the way we do it and it does it everywhere from one inch deep down to about 
three inches deep in some areas. We try to minimize that disturbance as much as possible. However, we get a lot more benefit from the cover crops, even with disking, than we would if these soils were left in poor shape with poor forage and did not produce a whole lot. We still get a world of a lot of benefits out of these cover crops, even if we have to disk or plant slightly to plant them. However, there are some things that I think we can do to help minimize the impact that disking the top of the soil surface does. First and foremost, only disk or till the top one or two inches, just enough to get a decent seed bed and to cover the seed so that it'll hold some soil moisture. Secondly, the cover crops that we're growing are cover crops that have really deep, really fibrous roots. Things like sorghum sedan grass whose roots can penetrate three, four, five feet deep into the soil profile. We also grow a hybrid pearl millet which has a really deep root and also things like uh, sunflowers, buckwheat, and many others. And so because there's a diverse set of different cover crops, and because those cover crops have deep tap roots and really fibrous root systems, we find that they still benefit the soil in ways that we never would have expected. One thing that I think a lot of people don't consider is that when we plant our cover crops, we're planting them much, much thicker than a row crop farmer grows their row crops. Corn may have 24 or 30 inch spacing, soybean may have even further spacing, but with our cover crops, we're broadcasting them, but even if we were to no-till drill them, they would be seven inches wide in rows. So what that would mean is that there are roots spreading all over, not just deeper, but all over the soil surface, helping break up that compaction layer that we can create if we disc the top inch or two of soil uh, health. So let me just encourage you to try growing cover crops even if the only way you have to plant them is to disc it up with a little disc or tiller. Even if all you have is a hoe and a shovel, you may not get more than a few hundred square feet actually disked and tilled or planted, but you can grow cover crops on a small scale and still perform a world of a lot of benefit to the soil, improving your soil, growing more forage for your livestock, and creating a better garden area. I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms. I hope that you will not allow the no-till drills or the other expensive equipment to keep you from trying to grow cover crops. It can be done and you will still see a lot of benefit. Take care and have a great day.